Sydney Sutherland, age 25, was a small town hero, a nurse who many described as sassy but with a heart of gold. She was incredibly close to her family, especially her mother who she described as her best friend. She spent all her time at family gatherings and ball games when she wasn't working at the local hospital. Sydney lived in the small Arkansas town of Newport, a place with a hometown feel, where no one expected evil to be lurking. On August 18, 2020, Sydney told her family she was going for a jog. She was known for going on long walks and runs around the same rural area. Her mother, Maggie, recalls saying Sydney, don't run today. You just left the trainer and did an hour workout. Her last words to her mother were, it just releases me. The last photo of her taken was on the house camera, of her leaving for her run. Several hours passed and Sydney's Snapchats, messages and phone calls became unanswered. Concerned, her boyfriend called her mom and asked have you heard from Sydney? Her mom said she hadn't heard from her since she left for her run. But she immediately knew something wasn't right. Her family drove down the country road Sydney usually took, when they didn't see any trace of her, they alerted the authorities. Time was ticking, and it wasn't long before hundreds of hometown volunteers joined her family searching County Road 41, and the surrounding fields. Police, family, friends, community members, FBI and three helicopters scoured the area. Along the road, her abandoned cell phone was spotted and her mother began crawling the road on her hands and knees, looking for any clue possible. She crawled a distance down the road, and found a single bead, she held it up and yelled, Sydney's been here. By then detectives had already questioned a UPS mail truck driver who had been the last person to see her. He had an alibi as he was on the clock doing deliveries but he mentioned seeing a local man in his truck driving at the same time he saw Sydney. The local man was a familiar face a married family man, an award-winning farmer, who lived just down the road and graduated school just a few years before Sydney. He and Sydney were friendly in passing but not close friends. Police didn't have to search for this vital witness. Quake Llewellyn, 28, joined the search willingly. He told the police he'd seen her heading south over the overpass, as he was headed home and he had no more information. But Llewellyn's behavior in the search was suspicious. He seemed to be trying to listen into the chatter of searchers and police, standing half behind a tree. Sydney's mother noticed him standing alone and knew he had seen her. She walked up to Llewellyn and asked him again. Can you tell us anything about Sydney? Did you see anything? He simply replied, nope. She was just running. He then reached out and gave her mother a hug and she quietly walked back over to the group of searchers. She stated to everyone, no, something was wrong. Something felt odd. The next morning, on August 21, 2020, Quake was called to the state police office for another interview. While he was being interviewed two investigators went to take a look at Llewellyn's truck. In the state police parking lot, they noticed blood in the cracks of his tailgate. Detectives wasted no time taking Llewellyn's phone and during the search, his last pinged location when she was last seen, led them right to the body. Thank you for joining us tonight at 6 o'clock, everyone. I'm Bob Clausen. Tonight, a heartbreaking ending for a search for a missing Jackson County woman. The Jackson County Sheriff confirming the body of 25-year-old Sydney Sutherland has been found. Sutherland hadn't been seen since Wednesday afternoon. For the very latest, we're going to turn it over to Claire Kreit. She is joining us now live from Jackson County with the latest on what we know so far. Claire. Yeah, Bob, I did talk to Sheriff David Lucas who at 3 o'clock who said Sutherland's body had been found. Now, we don't know exactly where, but I will tell you we are a little bit north of Highway 67, and you can see behind me a deputy has this access road blocked off. We have seen several law enforcement officers go in and out of this area. Again, don't know exactly where her body was found, but they did find her phone yesterday more north of where they were searching, about a quarter mile from her home, and they were concentrating their search efforts there. The sheriff did have a, have a press conference at 1 this afternoon before Sutherland's body was found, and he talked about how this case really hits close to home. It's kind of personal. Um, I do know the family, know them well. Um, I know Sydney, uh, watched her grow up. Uh, she went to school with, with my girls. 
Now, we are still waiting to talk to Sheriff Lucas to get a little bit more information on what exactly happened and where her body was found and to see if there are any more developments. We will keep you updated as we learn more. Reporting live in Jackson County. She was buried on rural farmland in an empty field in a shallow grave, a little over two miles where her phone had been found on the road. In police custody, Quake's story began to change. He told police he saw her jogging on that fateful day, but instead of going home like he said, when he drove past her, he turned his truck around and hit her with his vehicle. After he ran her over, he dragged her into his truck. He thought she was completely dead at this point, but later came to realize she was barely alive. He said he then drove her to a field nearby and raped her on the tailgate as she was dying of her injuries. He took a shovel out of the back of his truck, dug a hole in the ground and buried her right there. Autopsy reports show Sydney died from multiple blunt force injuries, and Llewellyn's shoe prints were on top the hole he dug for Sydney. Quake would later further this statement, by saying after he buried her he went back to work spending two or three hours checking wells on farmland. Then he just went home, ate dinner and went to bed. He's quoted saying he just tried to forget about it. While detectives were learning the horrors of Sydney's demise, her family was still searching and hadn't given up hope. That's when Jackson County Sheriff David Lucas called Sydney's brother and told him he needed to gather the family all together. Of all of her family, her mother was the most devastated. Do you have anything to say? Did you kill Sydney Sutherland? An affidavit filed in court shows Llewellyn's wife assisted in the investigation with police. She gave surveillance footage from their farm to the police, which showed a dead-on Quake struck that appeared the day Sydney disappeared. In the footage Quake is seen wearing the shoes that match the footprints on top of Sydney's shallow grave. His wife also immediately filed for divorce stating general indignities. Quake was charged with capital murder, kidnapping, rape and abuse of a corpse. Despite his initial confession, he pled not guilty and sought a jury trial. While in jail awaiting his trial the county rallied around Sydney's memory and her family. Justice for Sydney spray painted over the overpass she was last seen on would be covered up and reappear several times before town officials just left it. On her Facebook, one of the last things she posted before her death was a picture saying if I'm ever murdered just know I talk shit until the bitter end. This ominous post a reminder of the cheeky and strong spirit lost. Thirteen months later Llewellyn took a plea deal and plead guilty in exchange for no death penalty. He was sentenced to life without parole. Her mother, Maggie's, words during the trial ring just as harsh as the sentence itself. Quake, will you look at me in the eyes? Did she fight you? Did she cry? Did she ask for her brothers? She was not yours to take. Satan is real. The hands you hugged me with are the same hands you killed her with. Since the trial, Sydney's death has sparked national debate on the rights of women to simply take a walk without fear. The first of the Sydney Sutherland Memorial Walks participants dressed in all pink and walked the same road she ran her last outing. A hot pink cross sits on the side of the county road, just as for Sydney still not removed, and her locker at the hospital covered in memorial letters never to be given to another nurse. The Justice for Sydney overpass renamed after her officially. Her family hosts annual walks in her honor as a celebration of her life. Her life may have been short but her impact will live on.